Glory to God. Hallelujah. All glory and honor goes to God 24-7. Mankind deserves no glory. Amen. We owe all our life to him. Whatever we accomplish in this earth is because of Jesus Christ. No good deed of our life. We thank God for his mercy and his goodness. Most of all, we thank God for the indwelling spirit of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And we thank him for counting us to be worthy. No, he made us worthy. Mm. The Bible said God made us, uh, qualified us, justified us to be partaker of his inheritance of the saints in life. We thank God for that. But we could not qualify ourselves to thank God. Well, today we are continuing teaching on the Bible, what the Bible is. The Bible is the past, the present, and the future. If you were here last week, I will advise you. Well, um, you have the money, just pick up the tape. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. You know, amen, praise God. The past reveals what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. It reveals what God has done for us. The, what God has done for us in the past is lived in the future. I mean, it's lived in the present. So we are living out what God has already done for us. We are not living in what God is going to do for us, but we are living out and walking in in our daily life what God has already done for us. Amen. Amen. We live our daily life, which is in the present, and based on what he has done. To me, what God has done for me keep me going on in the present. Not what God is going to do, but what he has already done for me, according to his word, can keep my hope alive. Yes. Yes. Can keep you going on. Because what he has done must be lived in the present. And the Bible reveals the present and also the Bible reveals the future. We'll get to that later on. But we live in our life according to what happened long before we showed up upon earth. We are living out what was done at the cross. Yet we was no way around. But in the mind of God, he knew that the day would come that you will show up on earth. Long before you was conceived in your mother's womb, we was already in the mind of God. And he had a plan for each one of us before we ever showed up. He knew our weakness before we showed up. He knew that we were going to make decisions that were going to take us to the lower part of hell. But he had a plan to bring us out. Amen. He knew that we were going to do things that were so contrary to his word. But he had an ending for all what you were going to do at the beginning. He knew that as life progressed and as problems and situations would arise in your life, it was going to push you to your knees to ask him to come into your life. He saw you down through 42 generations. You know surprise to him was showing up. Earth was just waiting for you to show up. Baby. Earth already had a space for you. It was waiting for you to show up. God had already had his plan in position. And the plan and the purpose were waiting for us to show up. That's why we are no accident to God. You almost think that you made it didn't hurt God's heart. He knew he was going to make it. 
Amen. It didn't say God he knew because of your mindset that you were going to make a decision that would take you so far. I will take you to the deeps of hell, but it will never take you out of the reach of mercy. Amen. Glory. He knew that his mercy could always reach you. Because he made a promise. He said in his word that mercy and goodness shall follow you all the days of your life. See, mercy and goodness was waiting for you to show up. <laughs> okay. So I should, um, verse 2 and 9 and 2 and ten, before we get into the depth of this teaching. Um, it's lived in the present. We are complete in him the day that we accepted him. We were complete in him when we made Jesus Christ the Lord and the Savior and the Bishop and the Shepherd of our soul. We were complete. Let's read that. Verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10, and ye are complete in him. Now I want you to notice something. He didn't say that you had to work to be complete. He didn't say after a period of time, if you live good enough, you will be complete. He didn't say that you had to work for this. He is saying to us, you are complete in me the day that you made Jesus Christ Lord of your life. You are complete. Now, we have to live out that completeness. In the present, we live our life. We live it like a complete life. I'm completely delivered from destruction. I'm completely delivered from heartache. I'm, deplete, I'm completely delivered from principality and power because the Bible says that God, Jesus Christ, is the head of all principality and power. He controls everything. And the Bible declares that in him, in this head, we are complete. That means that principality and power and demons and all these other things that seem to take us down, that out of order, they cannot take us down because we are complete in Christ. We lack nothing. We are missing nothing to live a victorious life. We've been given every weapon, every tool, every spirit, every power that we need to walk and live a victorious life. Right, we are completing him. May nothing missing, nothing broken, and nothing like it. Nothing left for me to do but live out in the present what I am complete in. Amen. Honest to goodness. They absolutely no excuse for a child of God to live a defeated life. It's almost impossible for you to live a uh, continued living a, complete, a defeated life. Somehow, somewhere, victory will find a way to bring you out. Because you're a child of God. You was automatically born to overcome every situation. Might not be tomorrow, but if you are a child of God and you keep coming to church and you keep praising God, victory will find a way to reach you. Amen. Because Amen. we are born of God. We are born of God. He made, he called himself, he called himself our father. He want us to pray to him like a father. We are his called out one, his chosen one. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. We are his elected one. God's people. We cannot be defeated. We defeat ourselves thinking that we have to do this and do that in order for us to be complete in God, which we'll get to that. But you was complete from day one. Amen. Amen. You cannot earn that. You just live it. And that's the hardest thing in the world seems like for people to do is live what God has already done for us. Just live it out. We, we're just, we, otherwise we're like in a movie. We're just living out the script. What was written? What for me to do next? Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Let me live it out. I'm in a defeated situation. What I'm to do? He said, just give, thank God for bringing you out. Amen. Thank God for giving you the victory. That's the next step you do. Amen. Just live it out. We are to live out the word what has already been done. That is what we're doing now. Whether <laughs> you realize it or not, you are living out the past. Amen. In the present. You are shouting about what was done at the cross. Hallelujah. You, your salvation was done in the past, but yet you receive it in the present. Oh, glory. And you have joy, huh. unspeakable joy, Hallelujah. for what was done over 2,000 years ago. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. This is a blessing to me. Um, John 10, is it St. John 10 and 10? Jesus said, I came into my head light. Yes. Yeah, John 10 and 10. John 10 and 10 is lived in the present. It's not lived in the past. It was accomplished in the past for the present. Amen. And the, the past tell the present what the present can have. Okay. Nah, nah. <laughs> I know that's all right to me too. See, I know who I am because the past has revealed to me who I am in Christ Jesus. And I get happy about something that was said over 2,000 years ago. And one thing about the word of God, my God, the Bible said my word is active. And it's alive. Can you imagine how the word is alive in us and how we rejoice over the word that is over 2,000 years old? The word is still full of life, it's still full of power, still full of action, still full of everything. But look how old it is. Uh-huh. See, every word possess the spirit of God. Every word possess the power. Every word is anointed by God. And God's spirit never dies. Amen. And his anointing never changed. The Bible says, from generation to generation, from generation to generation, God, God remained faithful to his people. He will never cease to be faithful to his people. From generation to generation, every generation would read this Bible and rejoice. We could be going on to glory, but then our generation yes. would read this. Oh, glory. And they will rejoice. Hallelujah. The same way we are rejoicing. Mm. Our foreparents read this Bible. And they rejoice. Yes, yes, yes. Look at now we are reading the same Bible. And we are rejoicing. From generation to generation, God said that he will remain faithful to his people. He will never cease to be God to his people. He will never cease to be Lord to his people. He will always be our God. He will always be our Lord. He will always be the Savior of mankind. Yes, glory to God. That he promised us that he would never leave us alone again. He promised us, promised us that he will send himself back in the presence of the Holy Spirit in us, to walk in us, isn't that something? Mm -hmm. To live in us, to never leave us again. That's why I can make this statement so boldly. It's impossible for a, the devil to keep a born again believer defeated forever. Amen. There's no way. Because of who you are. God in you will not stay defeated by the devil. Oh, glory. 
It's lived. Philippians 4.13 is lived in the present. So let me just speed it up. You don't have to turn there. We all know what it says. Authority in the name of Jesus is for the past or the present? Right now. Uh-huh. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Uh -huh. right now. So why not? Right now. Present. But it was accomplished in the what? The past. And it was accomplished for the what? For the future. For the present. For the present. Now, I need to catch that endeavor now. Amen. <laughs> we need to pull down strongholds now in this present time. While the strongholds are active in your life now. We need to pull down strongholds now. Cast down the imagination now. And every high thing that exhorts itself against the knowledge of God now. We have been given spiritual weapons to use against a spiritual devil. Yet he can get away with so much. We allow him. Not that you helpless. You have the ammunition. You just have to use it. And, I'm, and this ammunition was given to you just for being a child of God. Amen. You don't have to pray 10 hours of have authority in the name of Jesus. The authority and the power that we need is a, has already been invested in that name. Amen. So I use good if you want to pray 10 hours, but it would not put no more power in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's for your benefit. Prayer is for your benefit. Prayer is not to make anything here happen. I'm telling you, only thing it takes to make this happen is faith in what God has already done. Amen. Prayer life can't get it. Faith in what he has done. That's right. Do you have it? Yes. Do you have to build it up? No, just use it. Amen. Just use it. Just use it. Well, how do you want to to build up faith? Use it. God didn't say go build up some faith. He said have faith in God. He didn't say go build up enough faith to come back and have faith in me. No, he said you have it. Romans 12 and 3. We have been dealt in the faith to have faith in God, to believe God for every promise, every plan, every purpose that God promised us. We have enough faith to receive. I have enough faith to receive whatever the word of God said that God has done for us in the past. We can receive it. It's not a struggle. It's not hard. We make it hard because we think it's too good to be true. <laughs> got to work and do something. No way we can just get there. And we try to punish ourselves when we mess up. Mm. When God said, this come to the, uh, to the uh, throne of grace and repent. But we want to do something, Lord. Make me suffer. God said, I'm not here to make you suffer. That's the devil's job. But we know I feel so bad. God has said when you say feel bad, the feeling bad people sin again. That's right. Because sooner or later you're going to start feeling bad. <laughs> so feeling bad is not the answer to stop sinning. Stop sinning is come and confess your sin and walk away and say, I feel so bad, no, I can't I can't help it. And God said, no, you're going to do it again as soon as the sun go down. <laughs> Well, you know, some people feel bad because it's extended, exposed them. Other than that, they never felt bad. Amen. 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 I'm not going there today, but one day I will go there deep, hard, and heavy. Come on. Church, it's time to get our life right with God. God is soon to come. It's time to stop playing around, playing church, thinking that you're all right and not all right with God. We need to examine ourselves and find out whether or not we are still in the faith that we started in. Amen. Right. Amen. And we still have that same fire burning that burning our soul when we accepted Jesus Christ and made him Lord. He is still the same burning God that burned within you the day that you got saved. He is still the same ultimate mighty God. You the one have changed your mind about him. But God is still God. He will never cease to be God. God is still that power, that awesome God that you were dealing with seeking with all your heart to serve him, to do everything to please him. You, you 
you, you the one stopped. You know why you stopped? Because you were pleasing God to get something from him when you did not have to do that. And because that seemed like he disappointed you, you stopped serving him. But you were serving and seeking God for the wrong reason. Yes. Amen. What made us change? God is still God. What happened here? What happened to us? No. We was only serving God to get his name. In some cases. Not his face. Because we felt like if we could get his name, then we have God. If he would bless me, that means that I'm all right. I be sure you devils that been blessed, good major, first time and running over yet, they're going to hell. Okay, so we're gonna get into that. There's a lot of them. Dr. Ben, you get into everything, right? <laughs> okay, then I'm going with my basic teaching. The future is based on what God has done for us in the past concerning the future. The book of Revelation revealed the future. You can go back and read the book of Revelation and find out what's going to happen to a lukewarm Christian. You're going to read the book of Revelation, you're going to find out what God's going to do with backsliders, backbiters, liars. Mm -hmm. It's already been revealed. Yes. So the future is already revealed in the past. What's going to happen to us in the future? <coughs> So you just out wonder what God, I know what God is going to do. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you if we fail to get out and act together. That's why the, 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 the future says to us, it said, remember your first love? Do you remember how much you love God? Yes. Can nobody stop you from coming to church? Can nobody stop you from doing things for God? Do you remember that? And the future says about us, he said, remember how you used to be. And when you remember that, he said, go back and do your first work over again. Go back and refresh in your mind about God. Amen. Go back, because I'm coming quick. Yeah. And my reward will be with me. Mm. So go back. You don't want to stand before God and God said, what stopped you? I have your record 10 years ago. You was doing wonderful work for me. You was witness, you was doing all these things. And then, on the 11th year, you stopped everything. I want you to tell me what stopped you. Did I wrong you? Did I disappoint you? What happened to you? You have to stand and explain a lot of things to God. Then you said to me that, Lord, I, I would always serve you until I die, but you didn't die, but you stopped serving me. See, if I would have honored your word, you'd have been dead years ago. You know, they say, Lord, if you bring me out, blah, 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 God said, if I would honor your prophecy, you'd have been gone. Hello? Amen, Amen church. Amen. Just think about it. We all. If God would have honored all those flattering words we said together, we'd have been gone years ago. You'd have been saying every Sunday, we'd be saying, Nero, my God, to thee. Every Sunday. Till we have our soul left. Because we make these fastest promises to God, thinking that, that we are turning him on. Thinking that this is what God wants me to say. If I please him, then he would give me this comfort. If I say all the right words, he'll give me this job. So I will tell him what I'm going to do. Lord, if you bless me with this job, I promise you I'll pay my tithes. I ain't paid no tithes yet. <laughs> so you got the good job, you have an excuse. Lord, you understand, you know my heart. God said, I knew your heart when you made that promise to me as well. Amen. 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 Preach the truth. Shame the devil. Yes. Now, 